Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabanis. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Bro Show. We'll cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic to base entertainment. And we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And I wish you them. And today we got a fiery show for you guys that we cannot wait to get into. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Before we even get into that, guys, we're trying to hit 200,000 subs by the end of the month. We really appreciate it if you, if you helped us hit that milestone by subscribing to the channel. Obviously, if you enjoy the content. Let me get into this topic here. So I've been discussing this for the last two or three weeks now. But what I've noticed is that Stephen A. Smith and other voices like maybe Kendrick Perkins and others have become more emboldened uh, to really say what they think about LeBron these days. And Stephen A. Smith really started when uh, on his show, the Stephen A. Smith show, when we got the we got the, the word that J.J. Redick and LeBron James are going to be having their own podcast, which is called Mind the Game Podcast. And, St- and Stephen A. Smith made it clear on air that he was skeptical of the true nature or the reasons that podcast, those guys came together to do that show. He ultimately said that the reason he believes that LeBron decided to start that show with, with JJ Reddick is because he has this need to always control the narrative. And now he has a platform to do so, to go out there and change history and rewrite history. And to be fair to Stephen A. Smith, he's tried to do that in certain terms and certain people have kind of gotten at LeBron James uh, for that. So what happened? Uh, yesterday, they were discussing a segment on ESPN First Take where they were reacting uh, to some things that are surrounding LeBron James in terms of Bronny James and the criticism that he receives and all of that. So they were discussing this. And at first, Brian Windhorst was the first person to actually go out there and speak. And as I was watching it, you could see that Stephen A. Smith started to get a little bit annoyed with some of the things that Brian Windhorst said. So when it then came his time to talk, Stephen A. Smith went directly at LeBron. He first of all went at him by saying, listen, Bronny was already going to get scrutiny and criticism because he's your son. But the fact that you went out there and started talking about he could play in the NBA right now, he's better than some NBA players, that started to bring a hypercritical lens on on, on that young man. So you're the one that should be held culpable uh, for that because you added to the flame. You stoked the flame. You, You were building all of this hype, number one. Number two, he also pointed out the part that don't get it twisted that LeBron, he may not have something to do with this new coach being hired or whether it's JJ Reddick or whomever, but he does play a role in getting coaches fired. And I'm sitting there looking at this man and I'm like, yo, what in the world is going on here? What did LeBron James do to Stephen A. Smith that he up here basically letting them know what it is? So for those of you who didn't hear, uh, Stephen A. Smith going off on LeBron James on ESPN first take live, live, live air, right? Uh, we want to want to play some of his comments for you, and then want to come back and react to what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Take a listen to him here. Props to LeBron James and Savannah James for raising such a wonderful son, for being such great parents. Because everybody that you talk to about Bronny, one of the first things they bring up is his character, the fact that he's a really, really good kid. He's hardworking. He's dedicated. He's focused, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And major, major props to them as parents for raising him the way that they have because he does seem to be a really, really good kid. I know that I'm rooting for him. I know that I want him to make it to the NBA. I know that I want him to have a successful career there. I'm certainly not rooting against him. But we're not going to gloss over the kind of predicament he's been placed in. It's one thing to be the son of LeBron James. There's pressure that comes with that. We understand that. Particularly in this day and age, Wendy and Legs, we know how cruel society can be to every and anybody for crying out loud because everybody got a voice and everybody got something to say. We understand that the advent of social media, YouTube and beyond. We get that. But we can't ignore what role LeBron has played in bringing even more of a microscope on his son when LeBron said, A, he wants to play in the NBA with his son. B, he was willing to play for a team. Uh, and go anywhere that his son was going and see how he alluded to Bronny being better than some NBA players. And you couldn't find, if you found one legs, if you found one Wendy, let me know. But I haven't heard one single NBA evaluator that ever co-signed on such a statement that LeBron James has made. Now we got to take into account, we have to take into account what LeBron James is doing, because he's a mastermind. Let's just call it what it is. Wendy, you know this. I watched you on Get Up this morning, Wendy, and I wanted you on the air, and I want to look you in the face when I was saying what I'm about to say. I completely agree with you when you say that LeBron James 
quote unquote, doesn't want to be seen as having anything to do with the hiring of a coach. He damn sure got something to do with the firing of coaches. So what is it? Now, we can sit up there and parse words. We could parse narratives and all of this other stuff. But the reality of the situation is that when you're LeBron James, when you're that great and you're that impactful with that level of cachet, when you play for an owner in Jeannie Buss who looked me in my face and told me personally going into last season, her number one priority was making sure that LeBron James is happy. Number one. That's what she said. Because she knows what he means to the franchise and she knows what he means to the game of basketball. You got to take all of those things into consideration and ask, what does that equate to? Last but not least, you also got to take into account this podcast, Mind the Game, by him and J.J. Reddick. Let's make sure we give them their props. Congratulations. It's a damn good podcast. You want to know about basketball? That's a place to go. They both know what the hell they're talking about. But it just so happens Everybody want to sit up there and say, well, you know what? He don't want to have anything to do with, 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 with who the next coach is. No, no, no. I want I want Greeny. I want uh, Wendy and, and legs up on the screen right now. Uh, he don't want to have nothing to do with that, huh, Wendy? Well, uh, uh, who's the candidate for the Lakers job? Ain't that J.J. Reddick? Ain't that one of the leading candidates for the job? I think so. I, I, I kind of know. I kind of know this. He's one of the leading candidates for the job. LeBron James and J.J. Reddick didn't start this podcast. Last week, now I ain't pointing the finger at J.J. at all because J.J. just doing his thing. I'm talking about LeBron. How are you playing for the Lakers knowing Darvin Ham's on a hot seat and you're going to start this podcast with a dude that's now a leading candidate for the head coach's job? So that's what he had to say. Look, um, I don't know where this is coming from, if I'm being quite honest with you. I really, really, really don't. But for whatever reason, Stephen A. Smith has seemed to have it up to hear what LeBron, like quite literally. What confuses me, however, what confounds me about Stephen A. Smith is that he points out all of these shortcomings of LeBron, all of these tactics, all of these antics, all of these tricks that he plays. But nevertheless, you have him at the se- you have him as the second greatest player. But I don't know how he comes to that conclusion. I ju- and then if you listen to Stephen A. Smith actually give an argument, he doesn't have a sound one. All his argument, was, well, if you think of everything and what LeBron brings to the table, I'm like, okay, would you mind going a little bit further than that? He doesn't really have a clear, concise argument that we can say, okay, this guy's bringing up some pretty solid points. You, we don't really know what Stephen A. Smith really thinks on the issue. But nevertheless, I'm surprised. And it seems like Stephen A. Smith is like, no. You can go have your bully pulpit. I have mine here, and I'm going to call you out. Now, what we do know is that he is one of the very few people at that network that has the chutzpah to do that, that has the cojones to do that. Brian Winnows ain't going to do it. Tim Legler ain't going to do it. The rest of Molly Cameron, all day not going to do it. It's only a few people. And what I'm noticing now, there seems to be a, a, a change in the tide. And the, the people that I'm seeing really go at LeBron these days is Kendrick Perkins. And Stephen A. Smith. I don't know the backstory. Now, Stephen A. Smith did allude to the fact that LeBron has had people approach Kendrick Perkins whenever he goes on TV and says things that clutch sports and these guys don't want him to say. Then they're going to approach him like, hey, why'd you say that? Why don't you say that? Da, 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 da. And he's also expressed the fact that Kendrick Perkins has now become skeptical about even having LeBron in a go argument. So you have that. Those things going in the background that we don't know that we're not privy to. But nevertheless, your man Stephen A. Smith seems to have had enough with LeBron James and his antics. So what I want to know from you guys, what do you think about what Stephen A. Smith, do you think was inbounds, out of bounds, whatever you guys think? Please leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you guys on the next show. Peace.